All right, folks, we are back. We are gliding our way to Dondoza. We are trucking in this episode. Yeah, we are hoofing it. I honest to God think that we might be able to beat this game in, like, two more sessions after this one. We see Dondoza, but Dondoza's not even the... <laughs> not even the Titan. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Well, he's a dragon, the false dragon. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's Tatsugiri. Tatsugiri's a dragon. Yeah, Dondozo's not. I'm getting, I'm getting used to Dondozo's one of those bonds where I'm getting used to like his. Uh, before I was like, eh, but now I'm like, I, I, I accept him. He's, he's, he, the, the gimmick between him and the sushi fish thing is funny. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I think him just being a giant catfish-esque dragon. Yeah. Fit some sort of mythos, mythos out there. Oh, yeah. Cool. I still haven't collected all the stupid coins for Gimme Ghoul. Neither have I. I don't, I'm not sure if I ever will. Because <clears throat> that is a... That is a, a hassle. It really is. Like, I get the idea the that they, you're supposed to... Like, the problem is, is like, you know, imagine that, like... You wasted all 999 of them on, on a Gimme Ghoul, and then it has, like, bad stats. Well, that's oh, what yeah. bottle caps are for. Yeah. Yeah, dude, but, you know, they're, they're hard to come by. They're, like, I think, what is it, 20,000 a pop? Yeah. Gold bottle caps at the auction place are, like, even more money. Oh, yeah, gold bottle caps are a scam. Regular <laughs> bottle caps are... <laughs> What's most achievable, I think. Mm -hmm. Wait, do they give bottle, bottle caps and raids? Raid? Yes, they do. But not cold ones. Um. Actually, I don't know, but I haven't gotten a gold one from a raid. I've only gotten. I've been unlocked the 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 six star raids because I haven't done the gym thing. Lamal, I've done a number of six star raids at this point. They're wild. I've only done one, just because I've only been able to find one. Eric, it's not too late. Oh my <laughs> god, you literally died, though. <laughs> Wait a minute, they... <gasps> they just... <what? laughs> he couldn't uh, call you when you were swimming? <coughs> I guess not. <laughs> oh my I know, god. Arvin calls you, he's like, hey, you know, if, if there's a problem, you can come talk to me. If there's anything going on with you that makes you want to jump off places, you can talk to me. Wait, did it teleport you into the middle of the lake? No, it teleported me away from it. Yeah, I think because there was a cutscene there. Are you sure? Dude, just went the wrong way. Am I? Oh, wait, did you mark it on the map? Oh, it's, yeah, it's over here. Yeah. yeah, weren't you on, like, the opposite side of the lake? Yeah, I was, like, I was like over here. Oh, that's super odd. That's inconvenient. Oh. I would say just go back to that, the, the, um place that you just fought the gimme ghoul oh, like flying there yeah oh my god look at him uh -oh. kick his little legs look at him go he makes I like me ride on but the one thing he does is that whenever you speed up all he does is get little lights ah uh. little booster engines activate so it's not like Coridon is goofy as hell oh yeah but, he has like he has a lot of personality fun to watch him move yeah yeah, but yeah, I do it's like fun to watch him move. Whoa! Right on the wheel. Jump, man. Tokyo drift around the Gyarados. Right. Deja vu. How to speed into space before. <laughs> I surprised space when the, the lake in the Pokemon <laughs> game is filled with Pokemon. Right. Oh my god. The, um... At the Safari lately, the... It's been, like, ridiculously muddy. So, like, while we're driving, the, like... So essentially, in like the main reserve, we use sometimes when the uh, when the dumpster right is too full, the, we'll like the raid den. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like when the um. Yeah, it's that one. Uh, but yeah, so like when the dumpster is too full, then we uh, we we have we essentially dump anything that's like easily biodegradable into the field, and, and like it it basically just like you know dissolves into dirt at eventually. 
so it's not a it's not an issue at all. But um, Do we have anything that's super effective against water. Also, I think water resists steel. It does. <laughs> that it does. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. Yeah, water is not something we're good at fighting. No, no, it's not. No. Oh. It said false dragon, so what? Oh, but yeah, so the, um. See, so yeah, so it's just been, like, ridiculously muddy there recently. And in the main reserve, like, when we go to dump stuff in the back. Because, like, you know, it's biodegradable, so it, it, just, it just turns into soil. And, okay. uh. The truck, like, almost goes, like, horizontal. <laughs> just because of, like, how slippery it's gotten, or <laughs> it's a little terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> yeah. It's one the of those things where I am so glad that all the animals are, like, put away for the winter. Yeah. Because, like... Yeah, like having like have to having to do that with animals around, oh, that would be even worse. There are people that like kind of manage in the terrain. Hmm? Tokyo drift into a bison. Oh god! In the safari, do they do things that like manage the terrain or kind of like keep after it? Um, not that I'm aware of. They just kind of like it. It's nothing crazy, it just basically, like, you know... The it's heck, a, sunk like a submarine. It's a field, it's it's a field, and it, like, it gets wet and muddy. Of, like, so the most we do is, like, animals that don't do well with the, uh... In, the, in, like, the slick mud. We don't let them out when that is happening. <laughs> Like, for okay. instance, if it's too slippery, we won't let the giraffes outside. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, most of the animals are yeah, pretty the good. The giraffe falling is probably, like, catastrophic to its health. Oh, yeah, it's that's bad. That's a long way. That's a concussion and a half. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, their heads are built to withstand a decent amount of, ab like, abuse just from, yeah, you know... because they beat the shit out of each other with them. That, that they do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, their their heads are designed are to take some abuse, point. but like, we prefer it's still not our good. yeah we prefer our giraffes to not have to take abuse <laughs> if they don't have to. Yeah. Like if they do something stupid then that, that, that we can't really like control, then that that's on them. You know, <laughs> that's nature's that's nature's work. Exactly. Like <laughs> have to go over to the main island. That we do. Dang, we might finish Don Dozo in one episode. I also like how Koridon looks more in its battle form. Oh, I yeah. It's all stanced up. It gets the little extra frond in front of its face. Yeah. A little extra oh, hair. the better of the two, right? Huh? You know who's the better of the two, right? Oh, Miraidon. Oh Miraidon, oh, and it's not even a contest, but like... Did you say Koridon is the best competitively? No, Miraidon. Ex ex oh, yeah, explain yourself. The one who can one-shot Arceus without a super effective move. Oh, shit. <laughs> because it's got... It's a dragon electric. <clears throat> it's got uh, an ability that sets up electric terrain and gives it a special attack, and it can still hold an item. Great! Yeah, so its signature move... Is powered up by the terrain it sets. That's not the problem with Karidon, is its signature move isn't a fire type move. Mm. Otherwise, they'd be on equal footing. But it's not a fire dragon, and it sets up the sun without its signature move being fire type. Hmm. Karidon is more versatile than Miraidon, I'd say. But Miraidon gets to brute force its way through everything. Hmm. You know what's funny? What counters both Koridon and uh, Miraidon that isn't a type that's been introduced yet? That's a uh, ground fairy. Interesting. Yeah, there isn't a ground fairy yet. No, but there should be. Well, what, what would it be? Uh, it'd have to be a legendary. So the only thing I can perceive of is like a cutesy mole or something. I don't know what would be a ground. Drillber. Uh. Right. 
What was I gonna say? Is there a grass fairy yet? Yeah, there's a Whimsicott and Cottony. Okay, thank you. And isn't I the... love Whimsicott, but I forgot. Isn't the oh, Ar... Tapu Bulu. Oh yeah, that one too. Which one? God. Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu, yeah, you're right, you're right. And what about the, like, Arbolive or whatever its name is? Oh, that's Grass that's, Normal. Uh, grass Normal. Oh, okay. Should be Grass Fairy, though. Arbolive was really cool. So thanks for not reminding me that I do have a shiny Tapu Bulu just, like, sitting. Oh, nice. Existing. <laughs> I got it on Halloween, and that was the last I played of Sword and Shield. Because <laughs> oh, I was showing, right. I think it was Laura shiny hunting with the with the d dens. What was that called? Max, yeah, the, Max Raid Dens? Yeah. Square up, Tatsugiri. What would you guys, how would you guys rank all of the Switch mainline Pokemon games? Uh, does that include, uh, Snap and all the Mystery Dungeon? Mainline, no spinoffs. Oh, so, uh, yeah. So no. just Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet? Let me rephrase. May, like, so, okay, let's go Pikachu and Eevee, BDSP, Legends oh, Arceus. That's right, that's existed. Legends Arceus, and then... Scarlet and Violet, Sword and Shield. Oh, shoot. That For me, it would be number five. Lowest of the low, BDSP. Uh, I agree. Above that, Sword and Shield. Above that, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Number two would be Legends Arceus, and number one would be Scarlet and Violet. I mean, I want to play Sword and Shield slightly higher, only because that counts the, the, with the DLC as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, the DLC was good. I, Yeah, maybe I would put Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee number four. I have mad respect for it, though. Yeah. Oh, I think it was a great, like, transitionary game. I know a lot of, like, parents and their kids got to play it together. Mm -hmm. Yo, the, oh, yeah. the Cubone cutscene alone. Yeah, like it did some really good things. <laughs> yeah, also, letting you ride around on an Arcanine, hello? Yeah, I'll say that. The, 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 that one, I definitely had a lot of fun playing, purely because of, like, the amazing Pokemon following animations. Yeah, like, they did a, a great job with that, and then they fucking ruined it in Sword and Shield. Like, they had, like... The DLC definitely has some highlights in Sword and Shield, but I think there's still a lot of things that they just did, did not follow through on with it. Actually, yeah. I would actually put, I'm almost willing, because of the fact that you could ride Pokemon, like an Aerodactyl Flying Charizard, through the sky on an Aerodactyl and a Charizard and a Lope. That kind of puts Sword and Shield uh, at the bottom. The bottom? Yeah. Not, the not bottom. BDSP oh. bottom, but like... No, no, just behind, uh... Still think it kills me. Okay. Yeah, so I feel like the debate would mostly be for number one and number two. Scarlet and Violet and Legends Arceus. Yeah. That one's hard. I'd have to see more on it because so far Legends Arceus kind of... The fact that it has bugs is what's holding Scarlet and Violet back from being like the best, in my opinion. Yeah. I feel like they're smoothing most of them out, though. I think the Ooh, fact yeah, I just wish they did it sooner. Well, ah, get rid of Psybeam. Never mind. Stomp has its niche, I think. <laughs> well, dang. That All right, awesome. yeah, we beat the fish. That's, that's sort of right on time, isn't it? It, it almost. Yeah, we got a minute left. We can use the cave as a transition. Oh my god, the cave. Who dare Will we the cave kill Arvin's dog today? Let's find out. I'm sorry, did, did you say cure or kill? I don't know. You're going to have to kill we'll have Arvin's to find dog. Out. Next <laughs> uh, no, I said kill. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully aware of what I see. Why is there an Ultra Ball in the cave? Yeah, isn't that a great question? I had a Pokeball in the middle of every single Urban Mystica cave, and I still don't know why. But it it was to the point where it made me think that like I could go back in and pick it up. 
Yeah, you'd think. <laughs> and then I would try to go back into the Urban Mystica cave, and I go, oh, never mind. It doesn't exist. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be the spawn in for the Urban Mystica. For like a placeholder model. Uh. But. You know, that reminds me of this, like, thing I heard about with Team Fortress 2, where there's a, uh. What is it? There's this, like. There's a JPEG of a potato inside the files for the game, and the pat the dev note was like, I don't know what this is for, but when I deleted it, it w the game wouldn't run, so... <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I don't know... Programming is weird. <laughs> gotta play. Uh, I, uh, programming is one of those things where I would never try to figure out how to do it myself. So. I, I, took a, I took, like, two weeks of a class on programming, for like game design, I took a web design class that was more or less a programming course, and ah, never gonna do that again. Literally, it's like a computer math. Like you can literally make, you can make so much better looking products for like half of the cost, for like half, like little to no effort with something like Squarespace. Squarespace. Which is the sponsor of today's video! <laughs> <laughs> Should we leave the audience in suspense? Yes! See you guys next time! Yeah. Bye! By the way, we're ending the playthrough right now.